Shares of Peloton are up 83% in the past six months, and there's really nothing that seems to be stopping this stock right now. The recent news today, on Tuesday, October 22nd, they announced they're going to be selling Peloton bikes in Costco. This sounds a little bit crazy on the surface, but you dig a little bit deeper, and it makes a ton of sense for Peloton's business. They're trying to sell more and more bikes, those expensive bikes, in order to drive their subscription business. But they need to sell those bikes profitably. How, you, how do you do that at scale? Well, if you're during the pandemic, all you have to do is just put up your website. People will find you. That was how the company really came to prominence on the market. But today, that's getting harder and harder. Customer acquisition costs are very high for products like Peloton. So can putting bikes in a Costco, maybe at a little bit lower margin than you would normally get with even other wholesale partnerships, but can the scale that that partnership will bring, bring profitability to Peloton? I'm gonna run through the numbers and why I think this deal makes a ton of sense. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's get right into what was officially announced today. And this is the release, Peloton and Costco to partner during the holiday season to offer Bike Plus at 300 US Costco stores and nationwide on Costco.com. The Peloton Plus bike is gonna be self-assemble and it's gonna re retail for $2,000 in store, $2,200 online, and comes with a 48 month extended warranty. That is a significantly lower price than the $2,500 that you can get a Peloton Pl Bike Plus for on Peloton's website. So why in the world would Peloton be doing this? The simple answer comes down to their financial statements. Peloton doesn't make very much money on hardware. Connected fitness product revenue is their hardware sales. So this is bikes, treadmills, all of the hardware products that they're selling. Last quarter, $212.1 million in hardware sales. Gross margin was just 8.3%. So that's kind of the bar that if you're Peloton, you need to reach. Sure, Costco, you can sell this at a much lower price, and their, Costco is likely taking a lower margin than other partnerships like Dick's or other sporting goods stores. So that's gonna be part of the differential in the price, but maybe they even nego negotiated a better price with Peloton, so maybe that margin is a little bit lower. But if you're gonna increase volumes, then that's gonna help Peloton's business as long as this number right here, the gross margin number, is positive. Because ultimately, what Peloton wants to do is they wanna have people who have their hardware in their homes, they have proven that that's what you need to get people to sign up for Peloton all access memberships. This is what the company is leaning into. They're basically de-emphasizing or getting rid of most of the app memberships. I thought that was gonna be a good strategy, turned out to not be a great strategy. What Peloton has to do, what Peloton needs is people who are willing to buy an actual bike or a treadmill, and then they can get access to all of this stuff for $44 per month. That is what drives subscription revenue, $431.4 million, up 2% from a year ago. And look at the gross margin here. Subscription gross margin, 68.2%, $294.4 million in gross profit. Their profit almost entirely comes from those subscriptions. So as long as they can sell more bikes and they're not doing it at a loss, that's gonna be a huge win for Peloton. So that's the context with which you need to look at a partnership like this. And Costco could bring a ton of customers into the mix. The number of paid subscribers right now, 2.981 million. Let's just say that over this holiday season, each Costco is gonna sell 100 bikes. That's not a lot. Hopefully the number will be higher than that, but that would be a 1% improvement in the number of subscriptions they're gonna be generating. If you go down to this revenue number, it's gonna be a one to 2% increase in revenue from subscriptions. Again, not a lot, but every little bit helps with Peloton, and that's also gonna be an improvement in gross margins because most of that $44 is gonna go straight to the bottom line. So Costco, phenomenal way to get your bikes in front of more and more people and as long as they walk out of the store paying $2,000 for that bike, doesn't necessarily matter if you're making much money on the bike sale itself. What you want is this subscription margin and subscription revenue down the line. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So are deals like this can ultimately push Peloton shares higher? Well, let's look at some of the metrics and the operating results. I'm gonna just give some of the multiples right here. Now, Peloton's PE ratio is negative because they're not profitable right now. I'll get to that. 
but their enterprise value to sales multiple 1.3. That's pretty low for a company that on the subscription side at least has a pretty high gross margin. So I think everything about Peloton's future depends on are they able to grow that subscription number, whether you're growing the number of users or you're increasing the price that you're charging per month on an ongoing basis. Is there five, 10% growth on an annualized basis there? If there is, I think the stock can continue to run higher. But let's look at some of those results. You can see from this chart that revenue has been declining since peaking during the pandemic in 2021. Now, that shouldn't be surprising when you consider that hardware was a huge part of the company's sales in 2020 and 2021. That was actually drove what drove most of the growth, not subscription revenue. But subscription revenue is today where the profitability lies. Once you get into 2022, that was when they started lowering prices for the bikes. You started losing money on each one of those bikes. Their costs were too high. Their prices were too low. Everything was out of whack with Peloton. But that subscription revenue did continue to grow quarter after quarter. So slowly between 2022 and today, you get improvements in net income and free cash flow. Now on a trailing 12 month basis, Peloton is not free cash flow positive, but it has been free cash flow positive over the past two quarters. So we're starting to reach an inflection point on the bottom line. If these kinds of deals and other retail deals that Peloton has been striking helps attract more customers, gets more bikes into people's hands, gets that subscription revenue up, that is what will ultimately help the bottom line. That's what will help net income and free cash flow. And remember, there's still a bunch of operating expense reductions that management is still putting into place. So I don't think this is a sure thing by any stretch, but this is definitely a company that's more trending in the right direction today than it was at any point really in the past three, three years or so. So this is a stock that I continue to own. And one of the reasons that I own it is this is definitely the leader in online connected fitness. There is no other company that is making more money, at least from a revenue perspective, or has more subscribers than Peloton does today. If they can win that market, is there a way to leverage that to be a really profitable and even slightly growing business? That's the hope long time for investors. I think there's a lot that still needs to happen. They need to get more bikes out there. I think they need to have partnerships with other companies that are selling pieces of hardware because Peloton does have the biggest suite of software, the biggest suite of classes that you can go in and access. And then that $44 price point is pretty attractive if you looked at a gym membership recently. So lots of things moving in Peloton's direction but we're still just kind of at that break even point. So understandable that investors may not be too excited, but been a pretty good last six months or so for Peloton. And I think this Costco deal is gonna help push things forward through the end of the year. But let me know what you think about Peloton and Peloton stock in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.